Hello, everybody. Toss Tech Talk. Um, we have uh, just a few topics on our list. Um, and I think uh, the first one is uh, by, by Frido, and uh, we are preparing a second topic. So, Frido, what about the scorecard database and updating that one? Uh, so, we use uh, scorecards, Open Source Security Foundation as scorecards that are stored in prescription as Git repository. And um, we use old data. Uh, we use like V2 schema uh, of uh, blob that is stored on Google uh, Cloud Bucket or whatever they, they call it. In the meantime, they push their data to, uh, in the meantime, they transfer it to a newer schema. Uh, I think uh, we are two schema behind, schema versions behind. So basically this one is about uh, updating uh, the logic that aggregates uh, scorecards data to query, big query, where data are stored now. Unfortunately, that will probably require um, uh, some budget to obtain these data. Uh, by uh, budget, you mean real money, like no bitcoins, no time, uh, but US dollars, which is uh, kind of okay from my point of view. I think you have created a few issues on GitHub uh, to do that, right? To update uh, the schema that we are using and stuff. Um, do you have a, a prediction how much money we are talking about? I don't know. Okay. Um, in general, that topic is something that uh, Zik uh, Stack Island is, is, is handling, right? So, from my point of view, it's a very good argument to have up to date data, especially if it's uh, security related data. The newer, the better, uh, I guess. Um, we should do that, right? I'm I'm happy with that. Um, so plan for it. Let's let's chat offline about the budget. I guess we need to provide a credit card to the Google uh, thingy. Um, that should be a little bit of configuration, and uh, let's do that. Is it a cron job that is running in that case, and that is uh, downloading the scorecard information, updating our information, and we're going to do a rollout to our production environments like every time? Or is that uh, related to a release of uh, uh, TOS? Uh, the, this aggregation is part of prescriptions refresh job. So okay. we need to implement logic that uh, obtains this data and stores. OK. Uh, Let's do it. From my point of view, that is a good investment, isn't it? I think it's valuable data. Cool. Any other thoughts on that one? Mm, as we um, as we download information and process that information, is it is it good for us to keep them in a backup, or we just rerun these uh, refresh jobs and keeps updating? I think we can keep uh, updating them as we do for the rest of prescriptions. Okay, cool. Other comments? Uh, um, are the scorecards timestamps? So you know when are we storing them timestamps so we know the last time they were updated? So if we wanted to display them, we could say like, oh, this is how up to date it is. I think. We have one unit that maybe stores this information. At least we do it for uh, some other data, but it's worth to worth to keep. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Cool. Or we can keep uh, information about uh, update in uh, unit metadata if that will help. You no, know, it's cutting 
uh, what we query in BigQuery. Um, methodological question, methodological question, damn word. A question to the method. Um, you people in Zig Stack Guidance just go ahead and plan that thing for whatever release, right? Okay, okay. Gage, what about you showing us links? Yeah, okay. So here, oh, that was not the right one. I'll um, share my screen if that's okay. A tab. Who's this one? What's this one? Okay. All right, can you guys see this tab? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, Could you enlarge this... it a little bit? At least on my screen, it's pretty pretty small. Yes, thank you. Yeah. So this is an advise and search UI. Um, specifically, we want to look at specific uh, justifications, which are specific to packages usually. So right now, there's an issue out to make them more, sort of organize this a bit more. I just haven't gotten to that yet. But right now, you can still look at all the justifications, info, warning, um, and press the links. So browse. So, so like, yeah, I have to filter some of them out because this one's browse. Search UI, which we're in search UI. But this would take you to, oh, yeah, that's cool. OK, that worked. Yeah, you can browse uh, that package in search UI. And that brings you here. What does that bring you back? Oh, it did. OK. So yeah, some of them will bring you to things like PyPy, um, release notes. So they're all different lo uh, locations. Some of them are internal links, technically, because they'll bring you to other pages in search UI. Um, let's see what this one does. Yeah, so they'll take you to different parts, different score. Maybe like sometimes this one's just taking you to documentation. So I guess the goal is to sort of filter out which links are more specific and should be navigated to and which links are more generic and can be grouped together with other things. So I'm guessing a lot of the scorecard ones might be able to be grouped together. I don't know. So what do you guys think? This is a tech talk. So do we think we should sort of link these? Are these worth the link together? Is it best to sort of just show every single link? What do we think? Mm, spontaneously, if you look at that page or stay at that uh, view um, mm -hmm. that we have right now, it feels like um, uh, we can cluster them them a little bit, right? Um, uh, it's all about asked on pars. Right. Oh, yeah, this is this is all this one package. So it's grouped ah. by package. So that's already that's already grouped. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, but we can also cluster them uh, via or, or by um, security related stuff like meta stuff. Yeah, I mean it's kind of like that right now. We have like info, yeah. which is information, um, and then warning. So it kind of splits like the security scorecard information versus the warning score security scorecard. Now I think like, I don't know what the best way to, cause I, I know they're not, justifications aren't grouped. They're just sort of like text link um, and then I think severity and then package. So things I would have to use a little bit of natural language to like extract like, oh, this is a scorecard one. I mean, maybe not like exactly natural language, but still like extracting keywords saying, okay, now let's group this into that. But to me, it feels like, uh, um, so from a user perspective, what, what information do I need to know? Um, I, I need to know, oh, this is just a warning. I don't care anyway, so I, I ignore it. Mm -hmm. uh, can, I, can I easily visually ignore it? Yeah, maybe by putting a blue dot beside it, right? right. Um, all the info stuff, yeah, well, maybe it's interesting. I'm going to put a, put a yellow or a greenish um, blob uh, beside it so that I can visually filter out stuff easily. Um, clustering that stuff might also be interesting, right? Uh, we have information about the uh, 
we have meta information about the package, like like security from from the scorecard domain. We mm -hmm. have the uh, CI/CD best practice. It's also coming from scorecard, but it's more related to um, core software engineering practice, right? Having CI/CD, having having release management on uh, your packages is more like software engineering. Maybe we can cluster it like that, right? So so that we can say, okay, you're basically not interested in all that security shit anyways, mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Um, but here is, I, I, I have a hard time figuring out how to visualize that, right? But, but here is the card that is talking about security. We can, we can, we can display it or not display it and that's it. So, so that you can, maybe create your own view on the on the justifications we just gave you um and yeah yeah does it doesn't make an make up an idea in your brain too yeah i i know i had an idea to like make security scorecard and like an actual card and i think a lot of uh sort of like links to like GitHub, PyPy um, can sort of just be under here. Like, oh, here's the PyPy link, here's the GitHub link. Um, I know I've seen that on other dashboards. They sort yes. of have a little PyPy logo. Um, thing is too, with like dots as well, I could add a dot saying like, oh, that's a, um, I don't know, if there's something that's like very generic and might be on a lot of them we could sort of have a dot that sort of signifies something like oh it's high popularity maybe we can uh, hijack a, a real user experience um, designer and talk for them for an hour or so yeah this is What's yeah it's a lot of data in here that it's got to be parsed through i mean a lot of them cards a lot of them little links but mm. There's always some straggle. Straggle. Can't say that. And this is something we could do on backend, right? Because uh, having that like natural language processing, like producing, we uh, we have control of producing this data. So we produce uh, the data, and then we have control on how these data are visualized. So mm -hmm. we don't need to, you know, uh, do natural processing after that. Uh, I think uh, that uh, idea you had like uh, having links to uh, GitHub, that might be uh, a good idea because, you know, if you check the package, uh, where it is hosted, uh, where is the community, like popularity can be uh, like a bar or something like that. Mm. Uh, um, maybe what could try to what could be good to try is sort based on links, right? Uh, these links that are in read more. How would that behave? Because in that case, uh, there would be natural clusters like uh, security scorecards, all mm -hmm. these data linked to one page. So they will be grouped in, you know. Section, yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. And then just have to find those lines in between if I want to make some break. Um, another, since we brought up backend, is there, I don't know, like, for example, high popularity on GitHub. It's, it, like, you could definitely just show, like, it's high popular, but, like, maybe you want to know how, how popular it is comparatively. I don't know how that data is stored or computed, but, like, maybe adding a context to the justification, like an optional context, like, mm -hmm. oh, it's like this out of 100. And like, it might not need to always be shown, but having that context and maybe some like blown up view might be interesting. Uh, it can be maybe statically linked, you know, like uh, on each package, if there's a uh, GitHub popularity information, we can have a link to documentation uh, stating how these data are computed in our justifications page. Right. So if we go to the popularity one, this takes us to, what did it take us to? Oh, that just took us to GitHub, right? Which I then, I don't know how easy it is to extract sort of like the this information, like, oh, you probably can't see the screen. 
um, extract uh, stars, watching forks, stuff like that. Um, I think we have had that idea once, like a while back. It's it's not in the current uh, show notes, but um, what about aggregating some of these data um, to 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 express like ah oh, we have a we have a bad feeling about this uh, package for example um if if you scroll around a little bit down please gauge gauge yeah. please there is here a uh, package is not actively maintained based on scorecard information right so that should ring a bell um so how can we give it a little bit a little bit more prominent place this piece of information um as it is not uh, actively maintained have we seen releases so how old is the last release for example that should even ring a larger bell and um i think the this example has no cve information uh, has the information no cve attached but it's even getting worse if it's unmaintained if it's old and has cve so so maybe we can have these kind of correlations and and really filter out what is important information which must be displayed right yeah because that kind of it, like it doesn't necessarily contradict but you might see this high popularity and be like oh it's a good package but then you sort of see all these scorecard information so is it is, is all the information we are seeing here about uh certify no it's all oh this one's all oh it is okay yeah i'm, I'm just I moved it around a bit but hmm. that's the show anything So yeah, I think maybe next steps, I'll put that in the project board to sort of clean this up a bit. So it's a, uh, do like the basics, right? Splitting the scorecards, maybe adding the links up here, but then sort of look a little bit further into the other ones, such as popularity and sort of the more, one, I don't know, ones you gotta think about a little bit more. Is that uh, is the whole topic like um, can we aggregate aggregate information? Which information should be showed? In what clusters is that whole topic that we are just talking about? Is that something for stack guidance, or is that like a cooperation between the user experience and stack guidance, or is it more about really doing the data work rather than displaying it? I think it depends on what stack guidance wants to aggregate if they have more data to aggregate then as user experience i think adding something like context to these justifications would be helpful for the user experience um a lot of, i mean a lot of this can be done just directly on user experience but like it might require a lot of like recomputation like stack guidance already did all this is just not included you know like it might just be as simple as I go, here's our scorecard stuff. Let's add an extra label. Yeah. I was just wondering how, who, who's going to take that uh, topic forward a little bit. Uh, there's already an issue out on um, okay. search UI. So, but it's kind of broad. It's just sort of organized this a bit more. Um, that could definitely evolve into a little bit more of a collaboration, though. Okay. That would be good. Because um, I think that that search UI that really um, visualizing all the stuff in a to a human brain is um, is a good feature and is kind of lacking and then we could put a little bit of priority on top of that. Mm. Good. Uh, just a question: Could you uh, post link to this result page? Yeah. So this is on stage. Everybody should be able to access it. Yeah, maybe you could uh, drop in a few words into the uh, show notes too. Oh um, yeah, I'll, I'll put the link there too. Not not gonna copy it from here to there. It's in your buffer already. Um, 
I think uh, if uh, there's no log file as an input, right? Mm -hmm. There's no comparison like what you do with plus minus. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I that's actually what I'm. What I was just gonna pick up today was sort of remove that necessary comparison because um, I don't know. I think there was an issue I talked to you with about on how you ran that one advise through Thamos and that didn't require a pip file lock or an individual lock file. So it, like, it just didn't work. Um, I didn't know because the search UI requires a lock file. I didn't know that was a possibility. So the next issue that I'm working on before this justifications is sort of not necessarily removing it, but making it an optional parameter. So saying like, okay, I just want to view one advice, or maybe I want to view an advice in this lock file. So we're being able to select through a drop down, which will eventually allow us to be able to compare sort of like two environments. So I ran two advices on two different environments, and then I compare those. So it's a little bit more dynamic. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like uh, on uh, advice on two environments, right? And show it. Yeah. So, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, this is going to load again. But like right now, I can go from like old to new. Eventually, that won't be old and new. Think of it as like a drop down menu right over here, which will basically like new is the one that, like the one that Thoth advise created. So there'll be like the advice. Then there also, if you provided an old log file, then there'll be like your old environment. But maybe I was also gonna add an option to sort of like import another advice or like save an advice from your cache. Like, okay, here's some older advices and they're tagged with this environment. So just the ability to compare advices if you want to or visualize just one of them. Uh, and what about uh, having dependency graph like the whole application dependency graph? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you show the uh, dependency graph when you click on uh, packages. That's that's great, by the way, because you see like how that package was brought to the application. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So that's um, what I do right now is I merge two graphs together and all the merging does is basically saying if it was removed, if it was changed or if it was added. Um, so like an added package like uh, this one right there, it's it really doesn't affect the graph because there's two separate graphs. This is just showing um, sort of a merged graph. And if I would like to see like the whole application graph, not specifically uh, for uh, some package, but you know all the packages and how they are brought to the application. Yeah, I used to have that. Um, I was going back and forth, sort of either including it or not. Um, the reason not to include it at this point was because for things like um, TensorFlow, this is just TensorFlow that I didn't advise on. And I mean, there's there's a decent amount of packages and it kind of slows down the um, UI. It's a bit laggy and it's not necessarily that readable. I, I played around with like clustering things and it just, it wasn't really that usable. Um, I could definitely include it again if that's something users would want. But right now this is just showing sort of where everything comes from. Mm -hmm. The other thing that um, we have <clears throat> uh, metadata endpoint, right, for packages. So uh, it su suggests, I don't know, that protobuf 392, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh 
UI could also visualize metadata about that package, uh, like author, uh, URL of that project for, uh, taken from metadata. Like for each node in a graph? Mm -hmm. for, for each package, yeah. So like something similar to this or something different from this? Um, you know that metadata endpoint that we provided? Yeah. Uh, so it shows information about packages, like uh, uh, URL, uh, where the package is hosted, uh, who is the author, who is the maintainer. Uh, I don't know. Then there are environment markers that uh, are applied. Mm -hmm. So a lot of information, like entry points, but for which platform the given package is built and things like that. Right. Um, so are you saying to visualize these on the graph or just visualize them in general for each package? In general, for each package. OK, so in that case, I was I would most likely want to visualize it here, sort of fill this out more. I know this isn't that uh, filled out, but eventually this will be a little bit more developed and have a lot more of that metadata. So you should be able to say, oh, I want to go to this package and look at it. I don't think it necessarily needs to be that in depth in the graph itself. I know like I'll pull certain things out like license so I can sort of look at the licenses like mm -hmm. if this if the advice is uh if it's worthwhile to compare them all then i'll put them in as a metric card but if it's just interesting to look at one of them in general then i will have it in its own page mm -hmm. yeah and i think exactly here uh, go go back uh please yeah one one take one click yes and i think here that that, that is uh the page everybody will end up with, right? Uh, be, because you're, I, I assume that each and every person um, somehow flows to the packages they know. So they would end up here and say, oh, cool. Uh, what, do you, what do these guys know about uh, Certify? Maybe, maybe this is really the right place to have some meta information and links to projects and stuff like that, like, like, like PyPI, but with other information obviously right which is which is why i um i would think it'd be cool to get justification specific to a package on through like a different link other than through a device because then i could show scorecard information i could show i don't know I, I I would shoot for for statistical information right um for example certify um blah 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 17 has never ever been used in in an uh ubi 9 environment for example so that you can make people think and and like go like uh uh figure out why 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 is that why why is nobody doing that um maybe we can have this this kind of information that that shows something that is hidden somewhere deep in the information but that is useful, something that we can present instantly, but that a human being needs to dig out in a little bit of time so that we can save time for the human being. Yeah. And, uh, so uh, plus one on that uh, metadata in this uh, package overview, I think it mm -hmm. makes sense. Uh, when it comes to these links and environments, it might be a good idea to expose an endpoint on user API that will link, like you can ask which uh, predictable stack or created content set or whatever it is now, uh, which provides. So for example, this is Google Out uh, Google Authentication Library, which predictable stack or created content set provides uh, this package so I can use it. 
This yeah. is something we can expose on user API. So in that case, you will see, okay, this library is used in, I don't know, uh, PS TensorFlow in that version, in that version, that version. Click and uh, you are ready to use the package in already containerized environment. Yeah. I think so that would be, section. Would you, you think that would be a, a section in a package specific page or as a smaller card in an advise package page? I would put it here on the package page but also mm -hmm. with package metadata and uh, link it to, I don't know if you worked already on, on uh, views for container images. You know? yeah. So when you click on a container image, like when you click on a link, it would give, uh, guide you to uh, that container image overview. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah that should be. Oh yeah, that's a lot of these are seem like they're outdated. Oh, I wonder maybe. why this happens. Uh, like maybe we don't have data in, in stage. Uh, no, that's that sounds that's not pulling from stage. That's pulling from um broad. Broad, yeah. It says having issues, issues with stage before. So right now, this just um, if it fails, it just builds another one, which works, I guess. Mm -hmm. So this so, yeah. is basically information about containerized environment. Mm -hmm. These Python packages, RPMs, uh, general information. Yeah, more detailed loads in as it computes, but mm -hmm. it takes a bit because I think I have a bug in here where it just keeps failing. Um, I mean, it, it keeps getting 404s. Uh, but, yeah. We should have also. Oh, yeah, so then he gets over this information too, similar to the advice for the packages in there. Oh. I have another one. Free to go ahead, but I have another one. Uh, I think uh, we could also show ABI that is present in the containerized environment. Yeah. Um, I don't know why it's not shown. I, I, I made a card for it, but I think there might be a... When I switched to TypeScript, I think I might have sort of added some rule where... Or not rule, but some check that would make it not render if some data wasn't available. And then I might have missed it messed up in some way so there is a card for it it's just i'm not it's not showing i think it's similar to this one the rpm details perfect that's perfect and about python packages dependencies uh from where do you get these data like proof packages um there's all the packages and then i build a graph with them all and then that's why it takes so long because there's a large amount of packages and I build a graph between them all. And um, yeah, I know there's not a good way to see all the packages right now. I'll probably put something like this, another one of these, but this is just sort of like a general, like this is what the the root packages are, um, direct packages, indirect packages, stuff like that. Uh, Needs a little, but. A more recent version of a of uh, results of these container images has uh, pip file and pip file log directly in the results. So when AI series CI builds container images, it puts AI uh, puts pip file and pip file log into a specific location, and then package extract the job that is uh, responsible for extracting uh, metadata. Uh, populate this information so uh, you can directly use it. That will yeah. save this competition. I, I saw that too, and I realized it wasn't available for each one. So that might be an optimization thing. So if some uh, some advisors don't 
include it or analysis don't include it, then I'll, I'll manually do it with all the packages. But if a lock is available, then I'll definitely use that. Like, uh, to simplify, you can assume that uh, this information is available, right? Because uh, that was feature added later, but. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't, yeah, it should. So we should just assume that it's available. And if it's not available, then just not show the dependencies in, this, in the cases. Okay. Christoph, you wanted to say something? Yes, uh, if I would be a governance and compliance uh, person, I would be really concerned about uh, 20 packages having no license agreements attached. Yeah, so this isn't necessarily that they don't have licenses. It's just that on PyPy for this version, there was no, because I get the metadata from like Thoth metadata, which is, um, which doesn't always have the, like the reason, I don't know. They don't always have licenses. Yeah, I mean, my point is very uh, different. Yeah. Um, that is a piece of information that uh, could be uh, very interesting, right? Mm -hmm. um, one topic is always like, um, are all packages, um, okay to be included in our commercial piece of software that is always one one concern and the other one is like there's no license attached how 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 do i know if i'm allowed to use it if there's no license attached so um maybe we need to to yeah i think i'm circling back to that aggregation of information on a higher level um, maybe we need to expose these kind of information as an API thing, maybe in the in the metadata or I don't know, uh, where we really can say, um, you're going to give me a package name. I'm going to tell you what we think is not okay about that package. Mm -hmm. For example, no license attached, whatever that means, right? If it's PyPI related, if it's GitHub related, we, we, uh, we have uh, William working on, on similar things. So maybe that is really in in, in good addition. Um, thinking about uh, higher level information about packages like license broken or uh, I don't know size of the artifact itself that might also be a piece of concern or a point of concern stuff like that. Again, I would say uh, that's a topic for stack guidance. Uh, please uh, think about stuff like that because that feels like the information we are able to generate uh, by now. And that is hard for a human being to dig out. That said, I used the meta uh, information, sorry, the uh, metadata endpoint. It takes very long for the example given like tensorflow uh, fedora um, python 3.9 and it results in 2.5 megabyte of json um feels it has a lot of hashes like 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 all the file names and and hashes attached to it feels like we could start experimenting with graphql for for some things because maybe i'm not interested in all that uh, file names and all that hashes for the file names and stuff um, just, just really like an observation uh, because I was clicking through and figuring out, oh, damn it, that's a lot of, lot of stuff and uh, taking a lot of time. Yeah. And I think that's cool. partially why this image analysis took so long is because there are so many, um, metadata grabs or pulls. It does cache it, but I mean, you'll have to do it at least once. Yeah. yeah, and you have to transfer data still, and you need to process that data in the uh, JavaScript engine of the browser. Cool. Looks, looks really good. Like uh, these type of overviews, because it combines what we have and shows what data we can provide. Mm -hmm. 
So I think we, we, we should pol polish uh, a little bit on, on that uh, search UI and uh, slowly start um, adding pointers to it in tutorials and documentations just to really spread the word a little bit. And um, what about a UX person? Is is it is it is it valuable? I I can see if I find somebody who's willing to work for an hour on it. Yeah, I mean an hour just to sort of go over and see like, hey, here this is weird margins, or yeah. you should split this up. This is confusing. Yeah, that would even just for a little bit might be helpful. Okay. Sort of put me on track. I'll try to do that next week then. Okay. Frito, did you have something more? So we could uh, expose that endpoint, right? Uh, this package and give me containerized environment that uh, provides it. Give yeah. me this package version and uh, or give uh, I give you this package version and give me uh, containerized environments. Let's pick that for that package version. Could be could be good. And uh yeah so everything is linked you know even these python package dependencies when someone sees okay this is jupyter kernel gateway uh clicks on it and it goes to the python package overview yeah it's not linked now but i i do plan on mm -hmm. adding that soon I, it was in the back of my mind but yeah that will mm -hmm. eventually be a thing I meant it more like general, you know, there's an overview of, of containerized environment and that means there's some content. Mm -hmm. So what we could also do, we could also generate an SBOM. So uh, if you click on co uh, this containerized environment, uh, the backend could compute SBOM and uh, click download SBOM. Okay. Like software bill of material, so people see what's. Um, I have a, I have a tool chain problem with that um, because why we are creating an S bomb on request from an existing container image. I think um, uh, security people have a point of view on that one. It should be created while the container image is created and signed and stuff like that. Yes, and yes. we would like to provide that information. So yes. if a containerized environment is built, uh, we can provide yes. uh, this bomb, which is yes. basically a structured representation right. of uh, what Gage uh, did. Like for machines. Yeah, cool. I, I think this is cool. I like. Cool. Any other thoughts to the search UI? If not, that's good. Thanks uh, for all that stuff, uh, Frido and Gage. Um, I'm going to stop the recording. Maybe you people can hang out for another minute. Mm, recording.